All right. Hi, my name is Cody. I'm with Synology. I'm a product manager out of the U.S. office. As you can see, we have a lot of our 25 plus series models listed here. We have our new 1525 plus and our 1825 plus as well. Both of these new devices feature our brand new 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connections on the backside, as well as both of these are also compatible with our new expansion unit on top of that. As you can see on the backside of these units, you can see that there is now some USB-C connections for the expansion of the system overall. And you'll be able to see that expansion unit on the front end here. It's just a five bay refresh of the venerable VX517 on top of that. And how does it uh how does it improve compared to the expansion units that were there before? Ah, so it improves on the expansion units before because it's using a more modern connection for the connection between the two NAS and the expansions. So the previous connector was vSATA, and so this is just keeping with the times and updating those systems to be in line with the newest connectors with the locking capabilities. Is it potentially more performance? Yeah, there's definitely more performance on USB-C connections versus vSATA uh, e connections. So that's nice. But that's so, not really the so because main point when you of expand, the expansion. You want it, the expanded drives to feel exactly like they were internal. So on, whenever we're talking about the expansion unit on these systems, there's no compute in the expansion units themselves. It is just like some extra storage for you. So realistically, you're not going to be expanding your storage array into the expansion unit. Typically, we keep those separate and we would have uh, that outdoor volume on the expansion unit used for just additional storage, maybe uh, for precious media and the like. And, and when you talk about uh, 15 and 18, it, yeah. that's the number of drives? So 15 is the number of drives you would have at maximum, including expansion. So it's a five bay model, and so it supports another two five bay expansions on top of that to get to 15. Likewise with the 18, that means it's an eight bay model, and can also sustain another uh, two expansions as well. Is there any chance that I can connect whatever DAS I want on a Type C? Actually, it's only compatible with Synology systems. Really, it's all about uh, keeping the most reliability you can with these drives. We want to make sure your data is safe on our systems, and we can virtually guarantee it's safe on an expansion unit with Synology drives on top of that. All right, so that's a requirement. There might be some people that wish that you could put whatever you want on the Type-C. Understood. However, this is all about uh, making sure there is good reliability of your data. The last thing Synology wants is for you to lose your data on an untested and unverified expansion unit. And how about DS? Uh, the, in, the, in the name, when you have DS. Oh, yeah, thank you for clarifying. So the DS inside of the model name here is for a disk station, which is uh, just the designation we give our tower or pedestal models that are desktop form factor. Now, if you take a look at some of our other RS models, those are rack station models, and that's the designation we give the rack mount solutions. Uh, do you tr talk about availability? Okay, yeah. So on the back side of this system, you're going to see it's a little bit different than some of the other ones. Uh, for example, there is onboard uh, 2.5 on the back of this, a couple USB connections and all that good stuff. But there's also a PCIe expansion slot uh, for a half height card. So it gives you all the other expansion options from Synology uh, in that realm. Whereas if we take a look at the other device, you'll notice it does have an expansion slot, but it's a bit more limited uh, in the fact that it has a 10G expansion with our mini NIC device. So if you wanted the ability to have a little bit more uh, options for your PCIe expansion, the 1825 Plus does indeed have that. So you can do 10 gig Ethernet. I'm sorry. For the expansion 10 gig. Yeah, that is a that's for the 10 gig mini NIC. Uh, that is available as an optional upgrade for the system. In theory, uh, with the Type C, you're just going to do expansion, but. Maybe there could be some other ideas, or not really? No, it'll be only for expansion, just like the eSATA was for the previous platforms from Synology. The USB-C connections, well convenient, and it might get your gears turning. These are just for expansion, and only for expansion in Synology systems. Uh, you can't use the old eSATA with an adapter on the Type-C? No, you cannot. You must use the new expansion unit with the uh, new 25 series models. Uh, simply because it's just a more modern component, that is the correct unit to use with this. Uh, you wouldn't mix and match the old expansion unit with the new system or 
what have you. Can, can we go in the front also? Check yeah, out yeah, ones? we can also check out the front. So when there's a new generation, it's very much awaited by the fans of Synology, right? To see the new 25s. Yeah. It's great to see the new 25 models, and with the DS425 Plus and the DS925 Plus, they're actually both really closely related. So essentially, the big difference between the two is the 425 Plus, there's not an expansion option, but the 925 Plus, you do get an expansion option, because that 9 drive base in the model name, for example. I thought Plus had to do with the expansion also. So there is uh, actually no expansion capabilities on this. Plus does not immediately designate that it has expansion capabilities. Uh, again, the beginning of the model name, for example, right here for the Plus series models, that will say the max drive base that it can support. So what's that, the Plus for? That is just to show that it's part of our Plus series, which means that it's meant for small businesses, uh, Soho home users on top of that. All right, so here's the 2.5? Yes, that would also be the two 2.5 gig ports on top of that. They're also uh, auto-negotiate compatible on top of that, so they can go down to one gig if that's uh, the kind of connectivity you do. On the, no, on the regular USB host, you can connect the DAS. So DAS you're you not connecting a DAS, so those are mainly for external hard drives, so that you can send data over hyper backup to the hard, external hard drives. Well, there are USB capable uh, containers and equipment that would house many drives potentially. Those are untested on Synology systems. We can't guarantee those are going to work in all cases, regardless of what brand, because they're simply untested on our platform. Nice. And here's a nine. So it just means they can expand. Yep. So essentially the 925 plus, the big difference is you get the expansion units on uh, the back. So you get one expansion port with that on top of uh, the already four bays in the front. Is there pricing on any of these? Uh, so I don't really want to comment on pricing right now because we're at a global event and pricing can be different in every region of the world. So definitely check your local distributors, look at our where to buy page to find uh, your local distributor and you'll be able to see the most up-to-date pricing for these systems when they become available there. And how is the latest performance of the CPU that you're using? Are they all similar Intels on all of these? So for these systems, a lot of these 925 plus models are actually uh, Ryzen based. Uh, so there has been some slight changes to the processors, but mainly the performance differences come from the comparison of one gig connections on the previous generation to the 2.5 gig connections on this new generation. And you want to have a chip that stays stable for a decade exactly. and just runs in your cupboard forever. I mean, well, it doesn't like uh, yeah. has some issues exactly. that could happen later. Exactly. For example, uh, my personal home system is a DS218 Plus that's been running for over about six years now. Uh, and so, yeah, we want stable systems that outlast their lifespan or their expected lifespan. And that is often the case with the Plus Series models that will last well uh, after their prescribed warranty. And uh, here there's a, there's a couple of hard drives. Yes. Uh, so you, you, you brand the hard drives because you want to have uh, high quality, you partner with a hard drive maker, and then you put the Synology brand on them. But you don't require it for these, right? Actually, for the DS925 Plus, you do, we do require Synology hard drives. Uh, right now, for the current availability, uh, we are actually restarting our compatibility list and we're changing how we actually go through the testing process. And we're getting much more strict on the uh, kind of drives that can be added into our compatibility list. So we're going to be releasing a new drive compatibility testing framework and users can submit drives uh, to be tested under that new framework. When these drives and devices launch, though, and when they're available at the distributors, the compatible drives on the compatibility list will be the Synology hard drives only for the time being. Okay, so, but that will make it a green uh, icon in your UI, but you can still connect any hard drive you want, right? But it's just not gonna, it's just gonna show a warning, no? So for the DS925 Plus on a brand new system with brand new hard drives, you need to use the Synology hard drives in that platform. Ah, okay, so there's a real tight uh, requirement right there. Yes, and that has been published, uh, I believe, the end of April. We had a couple articles, I believe. Uh, That's Synology. controversial, no? What? That is controversial. Indeed. Yes, yeah. it has been controversial, but the benefits of having the hard drives being Synology mean you have consistent support 
uh, you know the drives are reliable, and you can store your most important data for many years to come. Because you do a firmware update the hard drives, and there's firmwares on those hard drives that you might be updating. And Indeed. maybe that's what you're talking about a little bit. Like, yeah. That you want to control the firmwares on the hard drive in a different way that's... So well, that, that hard drive is that HAS. Mines. That is a SAS hard drive. Those would not be compatible with these systems anyway. Yeah. So, realistically, if we're looking at the Plus Series devices, what we would be... Uh, most people would choose is actually the the Plus Series hard drive. This is a little bit more of an economical purchase for the Soho or home users uh, for the Plus Series. And then if you needed a little bit more robust kind of architecture of the hard drives, you would choose the Enterprise ones because they have a longer warranty and are made of a different grade and a different type of drive. Is there any chance that this hard drive has, for example, 10 platters and if one of them breaks that you figure out to use the nine remaining in the RAID so you can have longer uh so usage of those hard drives, so instead of having to swap the whole hard drive when one So what you're fails. asking is, there's a lot of assumptions there in that question. And no, if the hard drive is malfunctioning, we're going to need to get that replaced. We're not going to be able to hobble along with half the platters. We're going to need to get this drive replaced, repaired in the RAID, so your data is fully protected. All right. OK. So thanks a lot. This Computex is a big show for Synology, right? Yes, yes. And 2026 is a huge year. Not just just at the plus series level, but if you take a look at our enterprise solutions like the past 7700, it's going to be the next level in Synology solutions for enterprise. Can we have customers. a quick look, just of very course. quickly? Yeah, it's going to be in this large rack here. It's a quite a popular location. However, you can see on the top left there, you can see the past 7700. That is an all flash array from us. It is a U.3 NVMe uh, SSD based system and is active active with file and block storage. It's going to have things like Synology tiering on top of that as well well as synchronous replication and many other great features. That is our new flagship system in our overall lineup. All right. And uh, and here's also uh, data management. There's so much stuff Synology is doing, not just the NAS. Huh? Oh, indeed. Yeah. So that data management side there, that is all about uh, talking about the past 7700 devices and uh, all of that good stuff. You're going to see a couple different things about uh, potentially the protocols that the past 7700 supports. And if we go around the other side, you'll see other solutions like new advanced uh, deep video analytics analytics devices, new cameras that we offer, as well as our enterprise backup system. Right. So first this off, you can see this is kind of the camera section from the overall booth. You can see that we're going to be offering, one, those cameras are already released, the BC500 cameras. But there's also going to be Synology PoE switches <laughs> alongside those cameras that you're viewing there. But these PoE switches are going to be great. Because if you take a look at this screen here, you can see you're going to be able to manage your POE switch from Synology directly inside a surveillance station from the NAS itself. The last thing in the surveillance lineup, and it's a great one, is the DVA 7400, which is currently in development. This will be our next generation AI-powered surveillance solution capable of doing 40 video analytics tasks, which will be the new flagship of the surveillance solutions out there today. Uh, this whole solution will also have great features like semantic search and compatibility with advanced AI models that are open source with this platform. So we're really looking forward to this one as well, going to provide some advanced capabilities to the surveillance platform. And on the NAS, uh, are you doing something about long-term support? Uh, because the software is amazing, mm. but sometimes to get the updates, uh, the limited number of years that people can get uh, those updates. I'm not sure right? where you actually got that information. Uh, honestly, the uh, overall update procedure is not a specified amount of years in that it's supported for. Uh, you essentially have lifetime support for the Synology devices now. Whenever you see a Synology device stop getting, whenever it stops to get, stops getting the updates for like an older Synology device, for example, uh, that's mostly because the chipset is no longer compatible with the new things that we're actually doing in the system. Uh, so there's not really a planned obsolescence. We will get support for the versions that it's supported on uh, for its entire lifetime. The hardware warranty is around three to five years, uh, depending if you have a plus series device or a rack mount device or what have you. Uh, but even in, in 10, 15 years, they'll, they'll still work fine. Mm -hmm. And maybe there'll be some security updates, but not necessarily the whole OS. Well, it depends. We also have some security uh, update plans listed on our website for like what kind of security updates your NAS would get for a period of time. 
Uh, usually there is some NAS out there today that are still functioning from even like 2013 or 2014 uh, that are still operating, but they may not be getting the most late, latest security updates just because they're that old at that point. They're over a decade old. But typically if you're not getting those security updates anymore, what we would say is we'd want to decommission that in place, get it off of uh, external access and make it only like a VPN only kind of device. Really just there to catch maybe hyper backup tasks if that's something that it was still capable of doing. Because you don't want to be hacked. Yeah, I mean, if you... You don't want to have a backdoor that's not patched. Exactly. So if, if the system is running unpatched, then you want to make sure it's in a secure enclave in your network if you still wanted to use it, or you'd be looking at indeed decommissioning it at that point. Or just not put too sensitive data on the older NAS. Well, you know, that is uh, up to the user at that point. But Synology's official recommendation is if there is no longer security updates on it uh, for that device, you would kind of make sure it's offline and inaccessible externally. And you could have it catch like other versions of backups from uh, other systems that are more up to date. Uh, but yeah, you would be looking most typically to access your NAS over a VPN, uh, whatever provider you like most. And you have so many functions in your ecosystem. Uh, there's also the cloud storage solutions that you have. You sell yes. cloud backups. Yes. It'd be nice if I could back up the whole NAS for low cost as an archival. I'd like to see something like yeah, that. Yeah, so already uh, with Synology's Hyper Backup, you can do full DSM backups, which is the packages, the operating system, the settings, everything on the NAS to Synology C2 Storage, which is a service that you can subscribe to. And it has competitive pricing compared to others, especially whenever you consider the fact that it's essentially a full image of your NAS secured in our cloud with multiple layers of encryption. All right, competitive with Amazon, Google, and stuff. Well, I can't comment on that since their pricing is constantly changing. Uh, I can't comment on what their pricing is right this moment because it's not right up in front of me, but you can consult our transparent pricing on our website. We do have a calculator, and you could use that to compare it with other platforms like Amazon and others. 